Hey guys, it's Jeffrey here again, and in this video I'm going to be talking about arrays, array lists, and iterators um, to go over those arrays. It's a fairly simple topic. I will give you a warning at the end of this, I'm going to go into a, I would say, definitely much more difficult topic that relates to arrays that might have one or two questions on the AP test, but most likely won't even be on there. If you feel like watching it, go ahead, but just be warned, uh, if you don't feel very comfortable with arrays now, it's probably pretty apt to confuse you, just just so you're aware. Uh, it's kind of a freaky concept. But to start with, the basics of arrays, which are fairly simple. An array or an array list is simply a way of storing a collection of values of the same type. So what I've got here, I start off um, declaring an array list but I declare it right here as a list. The reason I do that is because the list is the interface implemented by array list. Um, and it, uh, basically, it allows me to write more generic methods to analyze this. For example, this print list right here, I can accept any type of list and print out anything in it. You don't have to do this. I could have called an array list and there wouldn't have been really many side effects. I just would have changed this right up here to array list also. But sometimes I prefer to just declare things as a list here, since it doesn't change too much. But anyway, um, declare it's list or array list. This value in um, inside the carrots right here is the type of element that will be added to the array list. It always must be an object. So this is why wrapper classes come in handy. The integer wrapper class represents the primitive data type int as an object, and thus allows it to be added into an array list. But notice, however, you can use an integer, or I should say int primitive type expression, and add it to the integer array list, and Java automatically interprets it as an object for you. You don't have to do much work on your end, except for declaring this as integer here. On this side, everything looks pretty normal, except for this, what they call the diamond operator right here. This says, um, basically, whatever value you put in the first set of carrots, it's as if you would put that there. You could put it there, but it would just be redundant. So for the most part, um, they just allow you to take that out, just as, as a way to simplify the code. So that's really all it is for declaring an array list. The big thing about an array list is you can add infinitely many items into it, um, limited only by computer memory. So you could have an array list of a trillion elements if you wanted, which is really pretty cool. Um, and all you do is you use the dot add method to add an element into that array list. So if you see here, what I, I'm using a for loop to add in 10 elements to that list, and you can see them right here. You can use the dot remove method to remove an element at a given index. And you can see right here how, how the size of it after making that removal has gone down to nine. Um, the big thing with array lists is you use dot size it's a method to get the um, total length of the list. This differs for regular arrays, just keep that in mind. To replace something, you just use dot set index and then the value you want to replace it with. So in this case, I'm taking the element at index 5, which is the sixth element, and replacing that with 42. So you can see here the 14 changes to 42. Um, and I, I, I did mention this tangentially. I, um, the element index 5 is the sixth element because the first element in, array, in an array list or in an array has an index of 0. Just something to keep in mind. The AP test will definitely test that on probably at least two or three multiple choice problems. Um, so it's very, very good to know the first element is index 0. So index 10, for example, is actually the 11th element. So to go down to, um, to some of this, oh, that's just, oh, that's just printing, sorry. Um, go down to iterators. Iterators are one way of looking through the values inside an array list. There are actually many ways of doing it. Iterators are a really good way of doing it because they are the only way that you can remove an element while iterating over that list, um, at least in this easy of a fashion. You can um, also do it with a for loop and using dot remove given the index, but the iterators kind the iterators designed to do this. It's um, built built in part of um, 
the list interface is going to have it um, have a method for creating an iterator off of the list. So it's it's just kind of nice because that's what it's built for to be able to use the iterator. This most likely will be on the AP test. Just understanding that the way you have to do this is you call the identifier of your list dot list list iterator and it returns the list iterator type. But list iterator itself um, isn't since it's not an object, you can't say list iterator it equals new list iterator. It doesn't really work that way, unfortunately. Um, and then to go through list iterator, iterator, use the method has next to see if there's an element after the current one. Next will return the value of the next element and cycle the iterator forward once. So if you want to reference this value val more than one time, you always want to assign it as so. Otherwise, each time you call dot next, it's going to move on to the next element. And that can lead to problems. For example, if I said int val2 or not val2 equals it dot next these will not be the same value here and you would have just gone through two iterations which is dangerous because you only checked that there's one more element in the while loop so definitely definitely only call it dot next once um, and then assign that to a to a integer to whatever um, type of object this, um, it is just do an assignment and that'll be good and you can use, of course, it.remove to get rid of the element that you referenced last. So in terms of array lists, that is about it. Um, there's nothing super fancy. The only other thing that's worth mentioning is that if you don't parameterize the list, like in this case, you see I said it's, it holds type integer. If you don't do that, it's still valid. And it holds something of type object. Object is the universal superclass. It is um, basically any object you create automatically extends the class object. So it allows you to add in any sort of type you want into that array list or list. But the problem with that is you can't access the elements unless you explicitly cast what they're supposed to be. So for example, this first print statement here. You can't do other list dot get the element at one plus the other list dot get the element at two. Even though those elements exist, it thinks they're of type object. And the computer doesn't know how to add objects, only integers. So you have to explicitly cast them to integer to do that addition. There's no real reason to use um, something without the parameterization typically. A few every once in a while it's useful, but for the most part, it's better to simply put the parameterization there. Um, it, it tends to make things easier because you don't have to remember to cast every time and you'll um, save yourself a few errors off of that. So the second type of array, which in a sense, um, it's <clears throat> in a sense, it can be a little bit more difficult is the is a fixed size array. These you can't um, add and subtract elements quite as easily because the size does not change the way an array list size does. When you remove something from an array list, the array list's total size shrinks. When you remove something from an array, one that has a fixed size, then you simply have um, like no ele like an element of perhaps zero there or something that's null, but you can't actually remove that element. You just have to replace it with some kind of a default value. So the thing with these is they're always they always have the same length. And they're filled with, um, as I said, default values. If you make an array of integers, for example, it's filled with zeros. Um, same thing for any numeric type. The default value for a numeric type is zero. The default um, value for a Boolean is false. And for an object, it's null. Which can also, that can be dangerous if you forget to initialize everything in an array of objects, you probably will get a null pointer exception. Um, but any, anyway, there are several ways to fill the value, or to fill the array, I'm sorry. The first way is using an initializer list right here. You can only use this when you're first declaring the array. The other way to do it um, is, is through just direct assignment, um, the element zero equals zero, element one equals one, et cetera. You can do that with a for loop also, that's much more common. Um, and for a 1D array, that's, that's pretty much all it is for assignment. For a 2D array, it's all of the same concepts. 
you're going um, you can declare it um, again using sizes here and it'll fill it with default values you can declare it using an, um, an initializer list notice that I start with I've got two of those braces and then between each um, individual list in here I have a comma that's because the 2d array really is just an array of arrays um, in terms of accessing the elements of these you can use for each which doesn't allow you to modify the elements but makes it really easy to just read them or you can use a for loop which allows you to modify the elements inside the list if you so please just be aware this is something AP test loves is you can never modify anything using a for each loop you can, if you have um, an object you can call a method on that object in a for each loop but if you have an array of integers for example you can't change the value of an integer using for each so just be aware of that they love to test that one um, and that's about it you can see the outputs of this um, of this these transverse versals down here you you'll notice that these are all filled with zero that's the default value of course um, and this is where we get into um, the more advanced stuff this is that's all it is for arrays right there just know how to declare them know how to read through them with four loops and just know know how to trace through the iterations of a for loop that's about all the AP test needs you to do in terms of arrays and the understanding you'll need the one thing that they occasionally ask is with a jagged array a jagged array is one in which instead of having um, like in, with a two-dimensional array you'll typically have you know maybe five rows and five columns and they're all going to be of the same length in a jagged array that's not true you'll have um, inside this two-dimensional array arrays of different length so the way you want to um, declare something like this if you can't use an initializer list is you will have some um, you'll declare it instead of saying new int with two sizes you just give it one size and then in a in a for loop you're going to use a statement here um, to say um, what that next list inside this two-dimensional array should be what um, basically the next array you add to this array of arrays how big that's going to be and then you can fill that with values um, in terms of traversing through it you can use a for each loop definitely very easy for this you can also use nested for loops again make sure you do though the length at that specific row because if you don't you'll end up going over the length of the total array and that can create problems um, but that's about it you can see in this output here the way the jagged array looks um, it's instead of being a square or a rectangle as you'll see in something like this it'll have a dynamic shape sometimes the AP test will ask you what the shape is of that kind of an array um, that's that's one of the ones I saw in a practice AP test at one point but I wouldn't worry too much about these they're not going to come up very much if they do it's just good to be aware of what they are and to know that such a thing is possible in Java and I'd suggest just kind of read over the code um, make if you want see if you can understand it if it seems really confusing don't worry about it you almost never will see these on the AP test except for one or two questions maybe and in real life you will very rarely see them if you ever do it's just good um, to know that they exist in general so that's really about all I've got to say on arrays they're not too bad I just suggest practice with them practice looking over looping algorithms so you understand how they work the AP test loves to do confusing things with for loops and arrays such as saying here int j equals i they love to do stuff like that where the value of the inner for loop is um, is dependent on the outer one so just be aware of that um, but arrays as a concept are pretty simple and I'd say overall don't overcomplicate them um, they're not too bad and just just focus on the the, sim the simple parts of it and try and move forward from there and you'll be able to take it um, take it on the AP test so yeah thanks for watching